<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video here, we're going to be talking about something and covering something here that is pretty cool, at least in my opinion. This here is my hard-modded Xbox 360, and as you can see, I have a few selections of applications, games, and such on here, but we're also zeroed in on this original Xbox game, because the Xbox 360 does have backwards compatibility with original Xbox games through the Zifu or Fusion emulator. Now, one nice benefit of having a hard-modded 360 such as this is that there's backwards compatibility files for this that you can install on here which essentially allow all original xbox games to boot and some of them do play fine which are not officially supported but there's also many that will run into glitches bugs issues or just not work at all now that can be alleviated a little bit by using this script here being the Zifu spoofer, which allows you to go in and select a specific Zifu or Fusion emulator in order to boot up that game. However, with the recent progress over on the Xbox One and Xbox Series side of house, yeah, newer systems, not the older ones here, we've actually been able to get some updated emulator files on here, believe it or not. Now these are the original ones referenced on console mods, for example, that you can get the latest ones available. However, there's some additional ones here from 2019 and even 2021, which as you can see, were dumped from some newer games such as Fusion Frenzy, Star Wars Republic Commando, Unreal Championship 2, Destroy All Humans, SSX3, Chicken Little, Crimson Skies, a few others on here. And these specific emulators are actually from the Xbox One and Xbox Series backwards compatibility program, but they actually work on the Xbox 360, which is really cool to see. Now, if we combine this here with the original Xbox games compatibility list, check this out. I have shown this before. It shows many different games, their statuses, some notes of issues on here, but also which specific Zifu emulator will work and do what based on what tests have been completed. However, you can see new entries for Zifu 2019 and 2021, and this fixes certain games such as, well, the one I was going to show, if we look up Time Splitters right here, Time Splitters Future Perfect, check this out. You can get in game on some of the later ones, and it states here can't control the game with official 360 controller. You need an aftermarket controller with both 360 and OG Xbox support. Issue is fixed in Zifu 2021, but gun textures are glitchy. So you can see here, this game has had issues for so long, but it is made playable now with the latest Zifu 2021 emulator. So in this video here, I'll be showing you how you can set up the newer emulators on your Xbox 360 because it is not going to be as seamless as previous install methods. However, it's still quite easy to set up and use on here, thankfully. So whether you already have the backwards compatibility partition installed or you need to do it all for the first time, this is going to have you covered. And if you are wanting to follow along with this, you will of course need a hard modded Xbox 360, which means it is capable of running homebrew such as Aurora, XEX menu, Freestyle, Freestyle Dash, any of that. You're also of course going to need your original Xbox games of choice, a USB drive, so we can transfer some downloads from the computer over to our Xbox 360. And on the Xbox 360 itself, you will need a internal hard drive setup. You won't be able to just use a external hard drive for this, you will need an internal hard drive or an internal SSD because that will be necessary for the partition we're going to be creating. And finally, you are going to need Aurora as your dashboard. Even if you do not choose this as your main dashboard, like you still like Freestyle 3 or Freestyle Dash, you will need to boot up your games through Aurora in order to make use of the new emulators. Now, in order to get started here, let's get something basic out of the way. If you are using Aurora on your system and you have it connected to the internet, you are going to need the Zifu spoofer. For this here, you can press the back button on your controller, go to scripts, and if you do not have the Zifu spoofer installed, again, make sure you are connected online, but go over to the Aurora repo browser and open it up, go down to utility scripts, and from here, go all the way down to find Zifu spoofer, tap A, go ahead and say yes to install this script, and I'm going to override it because I already have it here, but once that is done, we can exit out of here completely. And once we exit out of all of this, there we go. We have the spoofer already set up. So you can go back into your scripts, go to the Zifu spoofer. And from here, you should be able to select which Zifu emulator you want to play around with. Now, if you do not have the files here, don't worry about it. I'm going to be showing you all in this video 
how you can set up the base emulator as well. Now, if for some reason you do not have internet on your console or you do not want to connect your console to the internet, I will show you how to set that up without using the internet and you can just transfer that over through USB. But for the rest of this, we are going to need a USB drive and we will need to go over to our computer in order to get all the files needed. So let's go ahead, move over there and grab the downloads we need. The main page we're going to be getting the downloads from, at least most of the downloads we need, will be the original Xbox game section on console mods. So if you get lost at any point in time here and you're wanting some written information at least, you can always check out the written instructions right here. But this page is good because it also has the downloads that we're going to need. So first of all, if you have not set up backwards compatibility on your console, you are going to need to download the hard drive compatibility partition fixer, which is going to be linked on this page. You're also going to need to download the hacked compatibility files. And finally, you're also going to need to download the Zifu 2019 and Zifu 2021 files because that is the whole point of this video to use the updated emulators. For each of these here, for the hard drive compatibility fixer, just click this and you can save it somewhere you can easily find it. The hacked compatibility files do the same thing. And for Zifu 2019 and 2021, if you click on this link, it will take you to the DigiX form, and from here you have a few download options. For this, we're going to use the patched 2019 and 2021 Zifu downloads. Again, just click on this and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Now over on the original Xbox games compatibility list, you are also going to need Zifu Spoofer. If you're not sure if your console has been set up with backwards compatibility in mind here, there's an easy way to check it. Over in Aurora, you can press the back button, go to your file manager, and you need to look for the HDDX partition. And if you have that there, navigate into it. Look for the compatibility folder, and if you can see your Zifu files right here, that means that this has been set up. However, if you do not have the HDDX partition, or if you go in there and you do not have any files or folders, you are going to need to set this up from scratch, which we're going to cover here. If you already have this partition set up, you just need to add in a couple new emulators as well as Zifu Spoofer, but again, everything will be covered. Now for our last utility, which is going to be Zifu Spoofer, I'm going to have this linked on the original Xbox games compatibility list. If you have Zifu Spoofer already set up, you do not need to worry about this. However, if you do not have your console connected online and you have not downloaded Zifu Spoofer, you can download it from right here. Go over to the section here covering Zifu Spoofer and you can click on download the files from console mods, which just like before, go ahead and save this somewhere you can easily find it. Next up, I would recommend you all check out the compatibility list for the games that you are wanting to play. And if you do some testing on here, I recommend to everyone to update this with your findings when you see which Zifu might work with which game, what could happen, what is broken, anything like that. For example, my game, like I looked up here, is going to be Time Splitters, and I already know from this, Future Perfect, it doesn't work properly with most of the emulators, but with the Zifu 2021, it does make it playable. All right, so for all of our downloads, you should have three or four archives right here. There's the hard drive compatibility partition fix, the actual emulators themselves, the updated ones, as well as Zifu Spoofer. What we can work on first is getting these all extracted. So if you're using something such as 7-Zip for the partition fixer, you can right-click this and extract it into its own directory. For the XB1-5832 files from 2018, you can do the same thing. Right-click this and extract it into its own directory. For the 2019-2021 to Zifus patched unencrypted, go ahead, right-click this, and you can just extract it out right here, since it will create its own directory. And finally, for the Zifu spoofer, do the same thing as before, right click, use 7-zip and extract it to its own directory. Now in order to copy all these over, I'm going to be using a USB flash drive and if you right click it and check the properties, it must be file system FAT32, which you should be more than familiar with if you've been using a modified Xbox 360 to transfer files to and from. Once it's been set up, you can go into your USB drive, grab all of the folders here and copy and paste them to the root of your USB drive or wherever else you can access them. Give it a few moments to transfer over, but once it's done, it should look something like that. From here, we can exit out of here, right click, eject our USB drive, and do the rest of our magic over at the console. From here, navigate over to your console and plug in your USB drive. If you're using Aurora, which you should be for this here, it should bring up a message letting you know that it's been inserted. Once it has been inserted, you can press the back button, go to the file manager, go over to your USB drive that you've plugged in, 
And the first thing we're going to run, if you have not set this up at all, is the hard drive compatibility partition fixer. You can tap the A button, find the default executable, and tap A. Now, once you're in here, it's going to give you this information stating that it's going to create the partition info on your hard drive. Now, after it maps your internal drive, it is going to create the partition on there. In order to continue on, just tap the A button, give it a few moments. And once that's done, press the B button to exit. Once Aurora is restarted, we are going to have to do a full reboot to the console. So for this, hold down the guide button, turn off your console, and then turn it back on. And here we go. Once our console reboots, go ahead and boot into Aurora. And now we're going to copy over the emulator files. For this, make sure your USB drive is plugged in, press the back button, go to your file manager, go to your USB drive, and then go into the XB1 5832 folder. When you tap the A button in here, you're going to have a couple of folders, one of them being regular and one of them being HUD and X game chat. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you just want the regular emulator that's been unlocked to boot up every game, then you can use regular. However, if you want access to the guide to do things such as play music in the background or have access to game chat, you can try this one out. However, it's been reported that there could be some issues and conflicts with it when you try it. So if you don't really want to chance that, you can just go with the regular one here. Go into the regular folder or the HUD game chat, whichever one you want to use. And once you're in here, find the compatibility folder, highlight it, tap the X button, navigate over to the left, and go down to the copy section and tap A. Now tap the right bumper on your controller, go to the HDDX partition, and it should be blank. And once you're in here, tap left, go down to the paste option, tap A, and say yes. And there we go. It's now going to copy over the base emulator files. Now we need the upgraded ones. So tap the left bumper to go back to your USB drive, go back, go back yet again, and go to patched unencrypted new ZFUs. Tap the A button on here, and tap the X button across all four of these files to highlight them. Now tap over to the left, go up to the copy option, tap the A button. Now tap the right bumper on your controller and in HDDX, go into the compatibility folder. And this is where the rest of your ZFUs are going to be. But inside of here, tap the left button, go down to paste, say yes. And now it should look like this. If you go into here, you're going to have your Xbox XEX as well as the ZFU files, but you should also see 2019 and 2021 as well as the appropriate title executables. So now we can exit out of the file manager completely. Now the last install we need to do here is we need to check and make sure Zifu Spoofer has been set up. If you press the back button and go into scripts, if you downloaded Zifu Spoofer earlier, it should be in here. But if you do not have it, I'll show you how to get that over through USB if you chose that method. Go into your file manager, go again to the USB drive, grab the Zifu Spoofer folder, go ahead, highlight it, tap the X button, go to the left, and tap the copy option. Now tap the right bumper, go into the Aurora directory, go over to user, go into the scripts folder, go into the utility folder, and inside of here, you can now tap the left button, go down to paste, and say yes, and it will now copy all of that over. We can now press back to exit out of this completely, and with all the files where they are, we now need to do another full restart. So turn off your console and then turn it back on. So now Aurora should load up once again when you reboot your system, but this time around you should have everything in place. Now in order to actually use one of these emulators, there's going to be a few things that we need to keep in mind. First of all, you might want to open up Dash Launch, and when you open this up, check out your plugins right here. And you are going to need to see if you use any plugins which are indicative of a stealth server, such as Proto Stealth or any of the other options that are out there. I say this because unfortunately you cannot have a stealth server set up and play original Xbox games at the same time. It usually just results in a black screen. So what you could do, for example, is whenever you know you're going to be playing an original Xbox game, you are going to have to come in here and clear out your path, which I do show right there. In this example, let's say this is one of our plugins, we can highlight this, tap the Y button so we can change that, then tap right bumper, 
go down to hard drive and you can tap the X button to save this change right here. And from there, you can tap the RB button yet again and go down to quit. But do keep in mind, if you are still going to run into a black screen booting up an original Xbox game, you might just have to restart your Xbox with this configuration in mind. And if you ever do need to set this back up, you can just go into the plugins, go into here. In this example, I was using HVP and then go back, save that yet again and then go ahead and quit. The second heads up I need to give you all is this right here stating the new Zifu files pulled from Xbox One series games cannot use saves made using earlier Zifu files. If the game is on the list of games with non rombo EEPROM locked saves and vice versa. So we can click on this list here for example, and let's say you played a game earlier on one of the older emulators such as Ninja Guy in Black for example, if you end up playing this on Zifu 2019 or 2021, it's not going to recognize your new saves, so you will have to start from scratch on a new emulator. And vice versa, just like they said, if you play Ninja Gaiden or any of these games here with the new emulator and then try to go back to one of the older ones, those saves will not be compatible. So just keep that in mind. So now if you're ready to play your original Xbox game, you can't boot into it just yet. In order to set the emulator, you will have to press the back button on your controller, go into scripts, and go to the Zifu spoofer script. Tap the A button here, and if you've never run this before, it's going to do a quick backup of your emulator files. Then from here, you can select which emulator you want to have boot this up. Since we're trying to use the latest emulators here, I'm going to use zifu2021.xex. Tap the A button here, and it's now going to reassign all the other emulators to zifu2021, meaning any original Xbox games I play at this point are going to use this emulator. And if you ever need to reset that or change it, you can just go back over to scripts, go to zifu spoofer, and from here, you can say reset to default, or you can select any of the other emulators here that you want to boot your games up with. So now, as long as we don't have any conflicting plugins loaded in, we can now tap the A button, give it a few seconds, we should boot to a white Xbox screen like this, and after a few more seconds, our profile should automatically sign out, just like that, and our game will be booted up. So here we go. We do have it booting up at least, but let's make sure we can at least get in game and actually utilize our controller because that has been a big problem with this game on Xbox 360. So we'll go ahead and do one player, create new profile, sure, Xbox hard disk, and let's go through story. There we go, normal, select, and let's let it load up. Now as it loads me up in game, I will tell you all that I'm using an official OEM, like fully Microsoft license and everything, Xbox 360 controller. This one is wired, but it shouldn't make a difference because this is what we're going to be using here. Now, as you can see, it is what the notes were mentioning where the gun textures are glitchy themselves. However, I am able to actually walk around, look around and shoot. So you're seeing here the issue with the gun textures. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see your gun, which could make for maybe a little bit of a cleaner interface if you're into that. However, we are actually able to play this game. It is working, it is playable, and it just has some minor issues at this point. But we don't have to worry about tracking down any third-party controllers for this. We can now use our first-party controller and play this just fine. Well, mostly. Theoretically, all your textures should load in properly if you play this on a original Xbox console, for example. But if you're playing it on 360, this is going to work pretty well. But as you can see, we were able to get this game up and running and working using official controllers, which we haven't been able to do for years and years at this point. Let's go ahead and exit out of here so we can get back to Aurora. And as you can see here, that's pretty much all there is to it. Thankfully, if you have not set up your backwards compatibility on your 360, you should be at that point now. And if you have already set it up before, well, you now have the two new emulators that you can add in and play around with using Zifu Spoofer. And again, if you ever want to change these, go into Zifu Spoofer and make sure you just select which one you want to use or reset them to default, whichever one you choose to use here. Either way, that is about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.